This segment deals with the owner and operator's manual of the Everlast iMic 275P, a very well written 54 page long document that is free available for download on the Everlast website. I will be skimming through this and pointing out especially how the pulse MIG function works, what to do and what to look out for when using this function. And now let's take a look. Let's take a look at the manual here. And I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I'm not gonna read you all 54 pages because this is already getting too long. But we need to understand what this full manual single pulse system will do and what it won't do for you. So here's the table of content. We're gonna get back to that later. And dear customer, thank you for picking an Everlast product. Here is all our contact information. Then we have um, safety precautions, safety precautions, some more safety precautions, and some more safety precautions. Then you have some specs here, um, amperage range, voltage range, wire feed. Uh, it's a 220 only machine. Um, you have a couple specs on pulse, frequencies, and so on and so forth. And um, this is basically the backside of the um, sticker on the machine. It suggests that this machine in wire feed mode will be putting out 275 amps max for 50% duty cycle, 250 amps at 60%, and 195 amps at 100% duty cycle. Now, looking at this power cord here a little bit closer, and I'm not sure you can read this on camera. So what this says is it says three conductor, 12 AWG, 12 gauge, 3.31 millimeter square. So I'm not an electrician. I don't know how this all works with the, how much wire you need to carry which current. Um, I see that the maximum input is around 50 amps, the effective current is around 36. Uh, they figure the duty cycle of the machine and the cable length and there's formulas and there's tables and uh, I just, personal impression on an industrial machine that seems to be on the, on the smaller end than what I'm used to as far as power input cable. Now may that as it be, let's keep here Introductions and specifications, stick welding, arc force control, that's not our topic. We're not really um, aluminum stick welding. It shows you a couple connections here for MIG welding, for um, welding with a spool gun, for welding with a push-pull gun, how it's wired, how it's done. And it tells you something about MIG wire, single pass thickness and it tells you something about shielding gas flow. Now those flow rates, I would consider them to be adequate for short circuit MIG welding. Aluminum wire requires a whole bunch more flow and pulse welding requires more flow than short circuit anyways. But uh, MIG aluminum is supposed to be done with 100% argon. I agree, that's... Um, that's pretty common. Then here it shows you how to put the wire in, how the feeder works, uh, drive roll grooves. I don't see a note here to use um, different drive rolls for aluminum, but that may still that may still be up a little bit later. Here they explain the front panel and the display to you. Then uh, setup guide and com component identification. Um, it explains your selector switches, um, things on the front panel. Wire assembly, gas supply, power input cable. Here's your power input cable with the NEMA 6-50P plug. Yeah, we have that. 
it's supposed to run a 30 amp fuse slow blow I guess the maybe a 12 gauge wire is all right then we will have to measure the output and see what the machine really puts out here it tells you how you basic make dial your wire speed in on steel to get your short circuit if you choose not to use the synergic functions more basic make operation, clean your metal, multi-pass welds. It explains to you joint configurations. See, when you're done with this, you're like a professional welder. You just buy this, you go through all this. You can take your certification tests after this, how to do it, how not to do it. That explains to you how to hold your MIG gun. Pulling is okay and pushing is okay. However, Not for use with aluminum wire, the pull technique. Aluminum wire always needs to be pushed. So they got that right. Pulse MIG operation. Now let's see, this is page number one of pulse MIG operation. Here it explains to you how your machine is supposed to work, how pulse MIG is supposed to work. It explains to you stuff about DC waveform. That's like the shape, I refer to it as the shape of the pulse. Um, then it says with a double pulse type MIG unit, okay, but this is a single pulse type MIG unit, so you don't get those ripples like MIG like tick look. Um, the basic theory behind pulse. So this is page number one. Page number two, um, it explains to you more about, about pulse MIG. I actually read all these. So this is page three, the Everlast's MIG design, Pulse MIG design. So it tells you that you can do like, what you can do in a wider arc cone, making it hotter, whatever, what you can dial in. But if you notice nowhere on here, this is page three, page four, it explains to you all these functions, but really except right here, it doesn't really tell you any numbers what you have to do. Usually increments of plus 5% voltage, plus 5% pulse time, and 25 to 50 hertz changes at a time sufficient for coarse tuning. So it, it gives you an idea, turn the knob to co tune it coarse, okay? But it doesn't really give you a number, let's say you run 035 wire, 045 wire, like this is where you wanna be, this is where you want to go. So, pulse percentage, it explains to you how that works. Page four. Page five, um, it explains to you more about that. It tells you the adjustment range, and it basically says, start in the middle, okay. Um, page six. It tells you some more. So here it tells you about the frequency, um, adjusted in 25 hertz increments, then later on adjust in five hertz increments. Um, but not really a start point on what to do. Page seven. Now by this time you should have graduated welding school. Page seven. It'll tell you exactly what to do on the, what are we on now? Pulse on time. And then um, make inductance arc force, so you can fine tune the arc characteristics a little bit. And then it tells you about the MIG gas. Well, the MIG gas doesn't directly control the pulse and so on and so forth. Here it tells you then it doesn't tell you this on the front when it lists all the gases, but when you read through all of this and you made it through page number eight, then you actually hear that teach you that you should use like a 90% argon with 10% CO2 uh, to weld steel pulse. Like nowhere on the machine or in the front when they explain the gases, it, it tells you this. You have to like look for it and find it. And then 100% argon for aluminum regardless of whatever. And then um, if you want to use uh, stainless, you shouldn't use the trimix, you should use uh, a hotter gas.
So, and then after you're done with all of this, right, where it just told you, I didn't tell you this on here, but it tells you on the website. After you found all your settings, you can save them all, right? So there's nine memory saving, nine memory settings in the machine here, where you can save your stuff. But let's imagine you weld like different thicknesses aluminum, different positions, like a vertical up, vertical down, overhead in position. They may take different heat. And um, then you wanna have a stainless setting, Maybe you want to have a mild steel setting or two. Those nine settings, you run out of stuff pretty soon. This is why Everlast is so kind and provides you now in your manual. One, two, three, four, five, six pages of tables. And now let's look at this a little bit. Pulse MIG worksheet, worksheet six. You're supposed to write down your aluminum grade, um, 6061, um, welded with 4043 or 5356. Um, then put your material thickness in here, your wire diameter, your wire speed or your amperage, your welding voltage, your pulse percent voltage, your pulse frequency, your pulse on time, and your arc force. And then you can assign this to a program if you like to, but you can only assign nine programs. So now, basically, the way how this works, different than red, blue, yellow, silver welding machines that have a full synergic pulse, these guys, these other guys, they send engineers and professors at technical college in the laboratory for like weeks or months and have them run all these tests. And after they find the perfect setting for the perfect wire for everything dialed in perfect, then these guys program this into the machine. Here you are the welding engineer locking yourself in your garage for weeks at a time, burning through hundreds of dollars of material and filling all these sheets out. And then if you want to weld something again, you need to come back and dial this all in again. Now, let's take a quick look at this machine.